Hey there, ladies and jelly spoons. So Mrs. Joe got tired of seeing me in my brown work shirts that I do for chores around the house, paint stains and all that stuff. So she got me some new threads. What do you think? I'm digging it. So anyway, today's video is going to be about drills. Now this is not a drill. As you can see, the chuck has been removed. It's still mechanically functional, but it's not really operable as a drill. I went down to a local kind of thrift shop kind of deal uh, the other day, and I got a hold of a second set of the 24 volt max drill set. Now I really, really like this. Uh, I think that this drill, uh, this particular size has a lot of power. Uh, I like the versatility of the impact driver being able to uh, decide you know how intense you want that impact to really be uh, it's good for finishing or you know driving a, a heavy duty screw a four inch screw through a four by four either way it works very very well so when i went down to this thrift shop i found this impact set that had the impact driver the drill a battery and the charger and i got it for 35 bucks now, when I bought the set at the local Lowe's, I paid $130 for the set. So even if just the impact driver worked, I would consider it an absolute win because I got another battery, another impact, and another charger. But I'm going to get this drill working. Let's see what we can get into. Now, as you can see, this is kind of my drill collection here. Uh, years ago, I had bought this Ryobi set. It was also the drill and the impact driver and uh, two batteries and the charger. So with the impact driver on the Ryobi set, this little tensioner that, that locks the bit into place uh, just basically sprung off. The spring broke or one of the clips broke and it wouldn't hold uh, a bit anymore so I tossed it. Then one of the batteries died out and it wouldn't take a charge anymore so I tossed it. So now I have the charger, one battery, and this drill. Now, I like this drill. It worked fine for years, but the battery is going in and out. Uh, sometimes it'll take a charge, sometimes it won't. It's very temperamental based on how hot or cold it is. Uh, if I've used it for a long time, uh, it wants to take a while to charge. It wants to pause and cool down to take a charge. Now, I know that that's one of the safety settings for the lithium uh, batteries and everything, but I find it extremely annoying. I want to be able to get right back to work and with the amount of time that these batteries take to charge versus how long it takes to dispense the charge while in use, it's just not, it's just not viable for me. It's just not useful. So to replace that, I got into the 24 volt max uh, cobalt tools. Now, I know cobalt is, you know, not really super high quality, but I liked that it had lifetime warranties um, for most of their tools. Now, these drill, the drill and impact driver only comes with a five-year warranty, which you can get, like, you know, extended, but, you know, to each their own on uh, that path. Anyway, so getting back to the project at hand. As you can see on this drill, I've already taken the chuck off of it and this is what it looks like it's essentially just the impact driver with a little bit of different stuff going on with the hammer and everything set in there but they're very very similar in shape and size so with this particular drill the chuck had the teeth were all messed up and upon messing with it I found out that the teeth basically just fell out um, so I did some research online to see if it was even viable to try and put the teeth back in the drill chuck and I couldn't find any videos or any tutorials on how to do that. So what I'm going to do instead, because these uh, chucks are basically Jacob's chucks, they're essentially all the same. Uh, they're either 13 millimeter and half inch. So I'm going to take the chuck off of this Ryobi and I'm going to put it on this cobalt. Stay tuned. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the chuck. 
and take out the bit. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so as you can see, there is a Phillips head screw in this chuck. If you go ahead and wind it all the way down, you'll get better access to it. And you will need a Phillips head screwdriver to remove it. Now this screw is reverse threaded, so you'll have to uh, loosen it to the right. Or clockwise. Oh. All right, there you go. So there's our screw. Now, to get the chuck off, this is where you're gonna need your Allen wrench. So take the biggest, thickest, longest Allen wrench you have and tighten it into the drill chuck. Now you wanna get it good and secure. Go ahead and make sure that your uh, gear linkage is in one, the lowest torque gear. And we're going to go ahead and shift it to reverse, you, like you would be removing a screw. Uh, what I do is go ahead and put it on a flat surface, put the Allen wrench on a flat surface, and try and just hold it as uh, secure as you can and place the drill against your body. There's going to be a lot of force here. Uh, to break the chuck loose from the, the actual drill. So just be careful. So once it breaks loose, then you can just unwind it from the drill. And then you got your chuck. Okay, so once you've removed the chuck from the drill, just loosen the chuck like you normally would. It'll come right off the Allen wrench. Now you've got a replacement chuck. We might find something to use this for later too, so no need to throw it away. Now, back to the cobalt drill. Take our old chuck on our new drill, and we're going to reverse the process completely. Go ahead and tighten the chuck onto the Allen wrench again. and wind the chuck onto the drill, loosen the chuck. Now, I saved the screw from when I removed the chuck from this cobalt drill because I wasn't entirely sure that the thread pattern would be the same. And as you can see, the silver one here is the one from the Ryobi and the black one here is the one from the cobalt. So we want to make sure that we're using this one again. The thread pattern looks pretty similar, but the length is definitely different. And I don't know if you can tell, but there is a little bit different bevel on each one of these heads. So we're going to try this one and see how it works. And if it doesn't work, then we do have the other one to replace it. And then again, it's reverse threaded. So to the left to tighten. And you just want to snug it down. You don't have to put, you know, 30 foot pounds or whatever on it. Just snug it down. Nice and secure. All the way open. All the way closed. And this drill is completely usable again. Now you can tell there is a little bit of a difference. This one has a plastic sheathing over the top of it. This one is metal. Uh, this one's 
mine that was that I bought brand new and you can see the little scuff marks it has been used but this one's the one off the Ryobi not too much difference and now we have a perfectly usable drill um, I didn't know when I first started doing the research that most of these drill chucks are interchangeable now that's not for every drill I know that one of the Bosch drills that I checked didn't look like it had a set screw in it at all uh, so I didn't even mess with it because I wasn't sure how to take it apart and I, I didn't want to destroy it trying to, you know, fabric cobble or Frankenstein a drill together. The Ryobi, I could clearly see that there was a, a set screw in the bottom and I knew that I could remove that and that uh, through my familiarity with removing other chucks, I knew I could take it off without destroying the equipment. So make sure you do a little bit of research based on the brand that you're using, that you have access to and make sure that you're not destroying something just to completely destroy it and not be able to use it again. It's okay to break something as long as you're able to make something better with it afterwards. That's my rule anyway. Another little tip, don't throw your old drills away just because the batteries go dead. Those uh, drill chucks might be usable for something else. Uh, the other parts might be usable. So, you know, being able to scavenge parts from broken equipment that you have is definitely a vital resource to being able to work in a functioning workshop. Make the tools that you need from the stuff that you have. All right, folks, well, that concludes this project. I hope somebody was able to learn something from this. If you like what you see here, please consider giving me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions regarding the video, leave them for me in the comment section below so I can get back to you. If you like what you're seeing on my channel, please consider subscribing and show me some support. And until next time, I'll take care. We'll catch you later. See ya.